Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Edith. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 verse 18 to 23 This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph But before they came together She was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit Because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law And yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace He had in mind to divorce her quietly But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, Yeshua. Yeshua is from the same, Joshua. When we say Joshua or Yeshua, it's the same thing. Jesus Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus means the same thing. God saves. God, salvation. Salvation is from God. And Jesus was born as the second Adam. The first Adam was from the divine. The seed of the first Adam was from God. The breath of God into the bunch of dust became the first Adam. Go and look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The first Adam was a seed from God. The second Adam was a seed from God. The first Adam permitted destruction, gave permission for divorce by sin, by disobedience. By all, uh, by disobedience, he permitted death. Man was not supposed to die. Every sickness is death, in miniature of death. When you have headache and you don't treat it, eventually you may go mad. Eventually you may die. When you have malaria, you don't treat it. Eventually, you may die. Every sickness, if not taken care of, leads to death. Which means every sickness is a seed of death. Am I talking to somebody? It's not just sickness that is a seed of death. Lack. You you, you want to eat, no money to eat. That is death. Death is the absence of life. Or the cessation of life. When business has crumbled, that is death. So death manifested in the world in health in finance in relationship love dies in marriages if you go to the letter to the hebrews talks about jesus christ as in the psalm saying you prepared a body for me the body was prepared for jesus for one reason to have human authority what permits you the greatest authority you have on earth is your body you are a spirit who lives in the body the body gives you legal authority to walk on the earth to eat earthly food so it is the flesh that gives you authority to be human and to possess the earth but you are originally spirit so spirit living in the body am i talking to somebody so jesus was given body flesh so that he can have authority as human on earth to operate and to save all of us who were corrupted in the flesh jesus will not have needed the body the flesh except that the flesh had been corrupted and men were men of flesh and they needed redemption in the flesh by one who has the authority the qualification of the flesh but because he was god his own flesh was incorruptible he was a perfect flesh am i talking to somebody so the flesh gave jesus access to the world and gave him authority a spirit could not have died for man that's why those who deny who say that jesus was not born of the virgin mary they deny the right of jesus to save the reason why jesus had to be born of a woman and didn't need a man to sleep with a woman was that it is a woman who can give birth to a man and if it doesn't come from a woman doesn't have the authority of a man cannot stand in for a man cannot die for a man cannot speak on behalf of a man an angel cannot speak on your behalf an angel does what is assigned is on assignment is a messenger only a man can speak that's why when god wants to save you he raises a man who can stand for you it's true 
an angel can stand forever and may not help you except that angel is given instruction is a messenger an angel can stand and see an accident coming and will not do anything because he's not given the assignment angels keep their positions but as a man if a man stands and sees in the spirit eye that an accident is coming he can rise he said no in the name of jesus let that accident not happen that's when an angel goes to stop the accident that's it so when jesus christ when jesus christ took the body say the body you prepared for me was the body gave him legal rights gave him access to the world and authority to act on behalf of men in the world so the devil will not play anything because in the spiritual world the spiritual world is a legalistic world is a law is a world of order and law a spirit will not die for man a man will not die for his spirit a sheep cannot stand in the place of good so Jesus had to come so he came as the second Adam a seed of God born of the flesh just as the seed of God came into the flesh and the first Adam came so what did he come to do he came with the body for access and for authority he also came with the body for sacrifice to make atonement oh praise God so the body gave him access gave him authority and the body gave him equipment the body gave him equipment to save man that's why you cannot go anywhere without Jesus you cannot there is no salvation for salvation is in no one else he is the God who became man and has every right of man he paid tax by the way he didn't need to pay tax but he paid it to fulfill all righteousness he was baptized as man he didn't need baptism but he told john to fulfill all so that he can stand in legality and tell the devil i am standing on behalf of the one you want to destroy i am standing oh praise god yes that's it so when he was baptized he was he was given religious standing when he had the flesh he had physical standing he was born into a family he had inheritance standing inheritance standing he came from the line of david physical standing he was a man religious standing he was baptized god didn't need to be baptized he had all right he said to fulfill all righteousness that means for me to have all the rights as a human being that i need to stand in for another human being he acquired all this right so that he can stand in for somebody who had lost all the rights that is why he's a perfect savior and his salvation is perfect you cannot know him on behalf you cannot know him and be called banished children and be called no you are a son you are a daughter you have been given the highest dignity the angels bow because of you because you carry god on the inside look at romans chapter 5 let's read from verse 15 but the gift is not like the trespass the trespass here is talking about the trespass of adam and jesus is the gift john chapter chapter 3 verse 16 god so loved the world that he did what he gave he gave so the gift jesus is the gift of god and the gift is not like the trespass and the gift is the grace that is given in christ because the law was given through moses but in christ gifts grace grace is given through christ for if the many died if the many all those who died by trespasses by the trespass of the one man that means by the sin of adam many people died from the time of adam through the time of moses unto the last moment before jesus christ came many died through by the trespass of the one man how much more did god's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man jesus christ you can now see that adam and christ are placed side by side the old adam and the new adam shout hallelujah so verse 16 says nor can the gift of god be compared with the result of one man's sin which means what god does in christ is greater than what happened because of adam 
that's what the scripture is saying now that what god is doing in christ is far greater than what went wrong in adam so if you are saved in christ you are not just going back to what adam was you are going further tell somebody going further the gift is greater verse 17 for if by the trespass of the one man death by death here poverty sickness everything that is wrong reigned through that one man how much more will those who receive god's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man jesus christ reign in life so through, by receiving the grace of god in jesus christ you do what who are the people who reign in life they are kings kings reign in life which means the grace of god through jesus christ having jesus christ being your savior being your deliverer being your captain being your champion being your new life makes you a reigner makes you a king makes you a queen makes you not a banished child or children you are kings you are gods you reign in life reign in life means you reign in finance reign in marriage because life what makes life life is totality of everything that god has given us that means in marriage you are not struggling you are reigning that means in finance you are not struggling you are reigning that means in health you are not struggling from today by the grace of god the power of struggling is gone in the name of jesus no permission has been withdrawn from struggling i said permission has been withdrawn from struggling through the grace of god in christ jesus that has made us adopted sons and daughters you are made to reign so if you don't know this then you keep on struggling and think it is the will of god that you are carrying the, your own cross now carrying the cross is a different kind of teaching it's different you cannot escape the cross as long as you are on earth as a christian but carrying the cross is not being crippled it's not living it's not living a life of defeat the scriptures say rain rain means you are victorious and the scriptures say in all these things you are more than conquerors through christ hallelujah he said by the gift by this grace we reign in life from tonight by this revelation you are reigning in your life you are now given permission to reign in your finance you don't understand lift up your two hands i'm talking about spiritual permission receive the license to me to reign receive license to reign in your finance receive license to reign in your health it means from this woman whatever has been permitted to afflict you in your health the permission of affliction has been taken in the name of jesus now you reign you reign i command you that it is time to reign this is the gift of god it is a gift you don't need to buy it the gift is that you reign can you imagine the gift of god it is a gift and the gift is that you reign and it is in christ you don't need to travel to america for that you don't need to go to jerusalem you don't need to go to rome you don't need to go to mecca you don't need to go to anywhere you just accept the gift of god which is jesus christ as the grace of god and then the scriptures say you reign which means everything in your life that is the opposite of reigning in life it has died tonight in the name of jesus And it is your work to resist it you wake up in the morning and you see struggling you resist it this is not what belongs to me in christ verse 18 consequently just as one trespass the one trespass of adam and eve resulted in condemnation for all peoples all peoples until christ condemnation that's why a child that is born today nobody is born a christian if you are born in the flesh into a family you are under condemnation until you receive that gift the consequently just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people so also one righteous act one righteous act 
of the new Adam. Oh, praise God. It's a one righteous act. Oh, praise God. May God help us. One righteous act. Let's leave it there. One trespass of Adam brought condemnation to every human being. And one righteous act of Jesus. Let's deal with that. One righteous act of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4. Surely he has borne our griefs. That's the act. And carried our sorrows. He didn't say he has borne his grief. His grief means he didn't deserve it. He was in the flesh, but he was not part of the flesh. He was not part of the community of the flesh. He was flesh from heaven. Flesh for the sake of those in flesh. He was heavenly. So he didn't have a share in grief, but he took the grief of man. He, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. If you are carrying sorrow here, somebody had carried that sorrow. So you are being cheated. Every problem has a solution. So everything that has been fashioned can be averted. Every disaster can be averted. When Hagar, in the book of Genesis, Hagar was crying, the son was crying. They were looking for water. The scripture says, and God opened her eyes. And she saw a well. In every desperate situation, there is an unseen well. That if your eyes are open, you will stop crying. So there is solution. Is it our griefs, it bore it. So whatever grief that you are going through, whatever it is, at a particular time of the year, this is what happens to me. It is reversed tonight. Why? Because he carried, he bore them and carried them. He carried it as Adam. He didn't carry it as a man. He carried it as the whole of human beings. Adam who sinned, sinned on behalf of the entire human family. And when Jesus carried the grief, he carried the grief on behalf of the whole human family. The past, the present, the future. He bore it. Which means you were there. Your grief was represented. In the grief he bore. Am I giving good news to somebody? Say, so yet we esteemed him stricken. We thought he was smitten by God and afflicted. Say, so, so, God. Tell somebody, God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Wounded for all the transgressions. Murder adultery fornication every sin that had been committed 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 sin that had been committed sin that are being committed and sin that would be committed he was stricken wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisements for our peace was upon him and by his tribes we are healed he didn't say by strife we will be healed. We means healing has been done. Amen. Forgiveness has been given. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26 from verse 39. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. What cup was he talking about? what isaiah was speaking about in prophecy the cup of sorrow the cup of guilt when jesus was walking around nobody could kill him because he had not yet taken the guilt of man he walked about healing people he walked about restoring people they tried killing him nobody could arrest him but from the moment he submitted himself he was negotiating with the father because he saw that the pain of every sin that has ever been committed the guilt and the shame and the punishment and the scripture says the soul that sins shall die the death jesus didn't die the death of one man he died the death of any man that ever lived any man that lives and any man that will ever live he took the death of the whole of human into one and died and even god was afraid he was afraid of the shame he was afraid of the guilt. He was afraid of the weight. He was afraid of the cancer. He was afraid of the fibroid. He was afraid of the hypertension. When you are afraid of cancer, he was already afraid of it. So that cancer will stare you in the face. And you say, somebody had gone through this. So that I will not go through you. That is why anything can be healed. It was the shame of every sin. The adultery that should destroy a man. The adultery that should kill a woman. The every bad thing, he saw it that night coming. Because the night of destiny had come. He couldn't escape it. And he said, Father, if it is possible for this cup 
to pass away let it be born not my will because i came to do your will and he prayed twice at the end of his life, Father, let your will be done from that moment everything came upon him instantly the father permitted those who will kill him to come all this while those who had ever tried to kill him they never succeeded but this time around they were sent they arrested him for the first time nobody had ever arrested him he had done all sort of things broke their law they could not each time they want to hold him he will slip through but this time around he became a guilty man he became a sinner became a sick man became a poor man became a wretched man he became a failure he became a distress a deserted a lonely man the apostles ran away from him sickness clung to him evil hawked him disgrace was with him shame was upon him sickness every sorrow of humanity the past the present the future was heaped upon him that's why when a soldier slapped him he deserved it in the eyes of the soldier when somebody knocked him and spat at him he deserved it because he was carrying my face they saw my face they saw what i deserved they saw my sickness they saw my poverty they saw everything that i carried so when the man slapped him that was the day i was delivered that was the day i was suffering when somebody crushed him that was when the crown the crown him crown him with the crown of thorn the crown of the family to make me ashamed the crown of the family to reject me the crown of the no all those things were upon him because they saw me in jesus they saw my shame and my guilt he did not commit any sin but i committed my grandfather committed those who brought python into the family committed those who brought foreign husband those who brought foreign wife those who brought rejection they committed and the soldiers saw him accordingly and they struck him they nailed him he bled he died every pain he bore he bore somebody's pain every time they slapped him he was somebody's flocking each time somebody mocked those who mocked his ah come down now the day somebody's business will have attracted and let's see how you prosper now let's see how you marry now let's see how you have children now they gave it to him on the cross if you are the son of god come down let us see so that the day they tell somebody if you are a child of god let me see how god saves you that person can be set free now the whole issue of this he did all that for you which means every sin you have ever committed had been taken care of this program sponsored by the covenant friends and partners of grace family global outreach you can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a covenant partner today allow god to use you our account details are as follows bank zenith bank account name grace family global outreach account number 101-42-978-63 for inquiries, please call 081-804-43-225 or 090-738-48742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow observeth, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, Please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach. Or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.